Hi readers, welcome back to my channel. This is a video about an author spotlight and my love of Maine. So, <clears throat> in my imagination, I would love to live in Maine. Um, and I'm gonna tell you why, but the reality is I've been to Maine two times, both times in May, and both times Everyone around me was wearing shorts and a t-shirt, and I was wearing long pants, long sleeves, and a winter coat. So, I think the mane of my imagination is not ready to meet mane of reality. That said, I still love to read about mane. I recently followed this Facebook page called, I think, Old Pictures of Maine or something like that. I got my first introduction, like many of us, to Maine through Stephen King. That's not the Maine I want to live in, by the way. I do not want to live in Derry. Um, and I think Nora Roberts had a, a book or two set in Maine. I don't remember what they are at this point. But I think the author that had the most impact on how I see Maine is Janet Chapman. Um, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about her, not about her, but about her books. Um, Sadly, Janet Chapman passed away in October of 2017, and she was by far one of my favorite Rob authors, up there with Nora Roberts, because she does romance the way I like it. The first series I read by her started out with Charming the Highlander. In this series, um, I'll read the back of it, but basically, a group of Scottish warriors get transported from ancient past to modern day Maine through magic. And then of course they meet, marry, fall in love and all that kind of stuff. But there's also conflict and more magic. So I love a time travel, travel romance. And Janet Chapman delivered in this Highlander series. Like I said, the first book is Charming the Highlander. When a plane crash strands brilliant scientist Grace Sutter on an mount, icy mountaintop in Maine, she finds herself alone in the wilderness with the only other surviving passenger, Graylin McCaig, a sexy medieval warrior who's been tossed through time to find the woman he's destined to love. Forced together to survive the harsh, wintry landscape, neither expects the fierce passion that flares between them. But Grace is not used to letting her heart take control, and Graylin will settle for nothing less than her heart's surrender. Aside from the time travel bit, Janet Chapman, like Nora Roberts, is really great at character development and creating families. So this whole series deals with one brother after another, or their kin, maybe not brothers, but cousins and stuff like that and you get to know each character very well and they feel like family and that is something I always look for in reading especially a series now I might have had a little bit of wine last Friday night and realized that I did not own every one of Janet Chapman's books although I think I've read them all but one um so I got on the little internet and I ordered physical copies. I had Kindle copies, but I just don't read that. Physical copies of the Spellbound Falls series. Now, I don't have book one. It's not going to arrive till like May 7th or 8th, but I really wanted to do this video now. So the first Spellbound Falls, this is not, I don't think, time travel. It's been a long time since I've read them. Um, this is more of a, like a magic, a power thing. So it kind of goes in with my witchy month theme that I had going on in April. In book one, Spellbound Falls, Maximilian Oceanus, there's a clue, arrives in Spellbound Falls just in time to save Olivia Baldwin from an overly aggressive suitor, only to find himself attracted to the beautiful, if rather aloof, widow. And although Mac has come to Inglenook to get a handle on fatherhood, his newly discovered six-year-old son has set his sights on finding his father a wife. There might be a connection to the Highlander books on this. I'm not sure. Olivia, however, is busy getting Inglenook ready for its new season, so she doesn't have time to deal with her growing attraction to the dangerously seductive Mac. Besides, weird stuff seems to happen all around him. Take the fact that her seatbelt keeps getting stuck in his presence, or locks magically open for him without keys, and that he never 
and that he seems to have a talent for sensing things. Never mind the three lost albatrosses walking down the road in the middle of the night, since when are there albatrosses in Maine? But despite Eliz Olivia's resistance to falling under the sexy man's spell, Olivia is having trouble fighting her longing because she knows Mac is just the man to unlock the powerful passion deep within her. I don't mean to sound snarky. I really don't read these for the romance. I s tend to skip the sex scenes, not mostly because I read them all when I was a kid and now I don't need to. Um, but I read them for the family and the character development and the world building. And they're great stories, great comfort reads. Um, there are seven books in this series, so it's gonna, you're going to be with me for a minute. Next up is Charmed by His Love, a Spellbound Falls romance. On the front, it's got some rocks, a fire, a dog, and it says, Forbidden Love is the Sweetest. I might not have put that right beside the dog. All Duncan McKeague wants is to keep his crew building roads and bridges up the mountain to the fancy resort overlooking Spellbound Falls' new inland sea. He doesn't want anything to do with his own family magic or with the beautiful widow Peg Thompson and her little tribe of heathens. But when Duncan is tasked on keep, with keeping an eye on the widow Thompson, trouble starts. Because of a family curse, Peg fears that giving in to her desires will mean killing off another lover. This kind of like reminds me of Practical Magic, and I'm reading the rules of magic right now, so... Anywho. But Duncan, the strong, handsome man buying her gravel, is unbelievably tempting and determined to take care of her. Torn between her head and her heart, will Peg find the strength to break free of her Black Widow curse, or will... Pursuing their attraction put these lovers in harm's way. I don't know. Um, so I love the fact that there's magic. Next up, and there is a connection, I believe. I, I'm fairly sure. It's been a long time since I've read them. But there is a connection. In, they're in vicinity of the Highlander series. I wonder, I don't remember if we see any of those guys again. Next up is Courting Carolina. And picnic kind of scene. First, he has to eliminate the competition. While building a wilderness trail for a new five-star resort, resort in Spellbound Falls, Alec McKeague rescues a beautiful woman who's being chased by kidnappers and agrees to let her hide out with him for a few days. But when those days stretch out, stretch past a week, Alec finds himself, find fighting his attraction to the mysterious Jane Smith, despite knowing the woman isn't who she claims to be. Then again, neither is he. On the run from her own life, Jane is really Carolina Oceana Oceanus, kin to Maximilian, and she'll do anything to avoid the six ancient-minded men her father has brought to Maine to vie for her hand in marriage. But as the maddening competition heats up, Carolina realizes that she'll have to come clean to Alec, the seductive loner who's managed to capture her heart. Next up, The Heart of a Hero. Kitty on a rug? And it just, oh, this time the blurb is up here. It's hard to re resist a man who keeps coming to your rescue. Now here's where, on the backs of the book, you find out what the magic is. Originally from the ancient mythical Isle of Atlantis, Nicholas has spent the last year deep in the mountains of Maine, serving as director for the Nova Mare and Inglenook resorts. Fully embracing his life in the 21st century, he finds himself irresistibly drawn to a trouble-prone employee and is determined to keep her safe. Okay, an aside here. In all these books... Before I finish this, in all these books, the man is obsessed with keeping the women safe. It's a common theme throughout the series, but both the Highlander and Spellbound Falls. It can get a little old, and it feels a little dated. However, again, the character building, the world building, I still love. That said, um, two years ago, I was taking an online romance writing class, and... You know, one of the tasks was to read romances and look for certain things that certain things that happen in every romance. And I read reread Charming the Highlander 
but it did feel so dated that I ended up going to the bookstore and trying to find some more modern romances that I could look at and compare, but then I ended up falling into them and forgetting to do the assignment, which I did. I did the assignment, but I did with this book, but I got so involved in those that I forgot to note the parts that were the things, the five things that happen or whatever. Anywho, back to work. The last thing Julia Campbell needs is a man with a hero complex. Girl, same. Especially one as handsome and imposing as Nicholas. All she has to do is keep it together until her younger sister turns 18, and then she can focus on her own life. But strange things have been happening at the resort, and it's Nicholas who keeps coming to her rescue. When Nicholas is suddenly the one in trouble, thank God, Julia realizes he is not quite, quite what he seems, and that she'll do anything to help the man who's stolen her heart. Next up, For the Love of Magic. A sailboat, a house, a rainbow. When magic is off limits, practical magic. Love is all that matters. After 40 years of marriage, Raina Oceanus has done the unthinkable and run away from her mighty, magical husband. But they get back together. Not that she ran very far, having purchased a house in Spell Spellbound Falls right on the shore of the bottomless sea, where she intends to prepare for the scariest battle of her life. The only flaw in her plan, however, is that she's still very much in love with Titus. Shocked and deeply shaken that his wife has really left him, though he still can't fathom why, Titus sets out to win her back. But when grand gestures of his esteem don't seem to further his cause, he conjures up some of his original courtship magic. But his plan backfires when Titus discovers that dealing with demons is far less threatening than the little secret his very mortal wife has been keeping from him. Okay, there is a Highlander con connection. House, dog with a stick, that must be the bottomless sea. This is the Highlander next door. There's a new man in town. Dun dun dun. <clears throat> Birch Callahan has seen the trouble men can cause. After witnessing her mother's four marriages, Birch now runs a women's shelter and doesn't want a man in her life. But there's something about her neighbor, Niall McKeag. He, the McKeags were in this series. Birch can't figure out how the Birch can't figure out how the cop can be so big and gruff, and yet so insightful and compassionate and sexy. Or how she's falling for a man who acts like someone from the 12th century. Nial knows that Birch is attracted to him, even if she seems to dis distrust all men. Yet he also knows she has a secret, something that drives her to place herself in harm's way for the women of the shelter. Neal would gladly rush to Birch's side to protect her from harm, but with their secret standing between them, he'll have to reveal his own truth if he wants to keep her. And, finally, let's see, this was Copyright 2020 by the estate of Janet Chapman. It make, That makes me really sad. I, look, I, I may have sounded snarky in some of this, making fun of romance, okay, but the truth is I really love Janet Chapman's writing. I loved her books. I loved her stories and her characters. She's really one of my favorite authors, and all due respect to her. This last one is Call It Magic. There is a fire helmet, a bridge, a kitty cat, another rainbow. Love always finds a way. And at the top of the back of the book, it says, Welcome back to Spellbound Falls, Maine, where love is the greatest magic of all. Katie McBain moved to Spellbound Falls with, se with secret she secrets she plans to keep. The newest member of the fire and rescue team she disappeared for three weeks before arriving on the job. She doesn't understand why Gunnar Wolf, the town's interim fire chief, and her boss seems determined to uncover the truth of what happened to her during that time. 
or why she's more attracted to him than she's ever been to any other man. A confident firefighter, fighter, Gunnar Wolf didn't give up, and he's resolved, doesn't give up, and he's resolved to find out what's wrong with the mysterious and beautiful Katie. Since she's the newest member of his team, he's naturally protective of her, but he's surprised to find himself captivated by the tenacious and talented woman who is so magical. McBain. Another connection. God, this makes me sad. That's another connection to the Highlander books. And it feels like as she went from... Two thousand three to twenty seventeen when she passed, she did grow with the times and adapt with the times because this felt very old fashioned, but for two thousand three or shortly thereafter when I read it, it wouldn't have. But you know, twenty years later and some change, twenty one years later it it feels dated. Um, not much you can do about that, and no, no shame. I, I've noticed the same with Nora Roberts. I went back and read her, some of her books from like the, I want to say 90s or 80s, and there's some cringe, rapey moments in there, and no one gets raped, but it is a, you don't kiss a guy like that. And at the time, if I had read it, although it was not right, I wouldn't have blinked at it. But when I read it a couple years ago, I was like, ah, cringe, cringe. But again, the most important thing on all these books are the characters and that sense of family. And I especially love that in this final book, I assume, um, there's a connection to the first book. And I can't remember who Katie McBain is, but I might have an idea and... I can't wait to find out if I'm right. I won't be reading this book this... Well, this is going to be posted on Wednesday, so Wednesday will be May 1st. I might read them in May, but I'm going to have to break them up. I've learned the past couple years I can't read a series back to back to back. I'm not a binger. I've got to break it up. Otherwise, I'd start getting sick of it. Anywho, that is all for me. If you like romance and if you like a good author who does excellent world building, excellent character building, and tells great stories, give Janet Chapman a try. I'm sure her estate gets the royalties. And I just, I love her. She made me feel like I wanted to live in Maine because I wanted to know this kind of people. Um, I mean, I would like to know some time traveling Highlanders, but, um, Highlanders aside, the townspeople were all so friendly and just beautiful, beautiful writing. That is all for me. I hope you have a great week reading. If you've read any, any of hers, I'd love to hear about it. Happy reading!